I know the Bible is true? It's important to trust the Bible's message because when we do, it can lead us, by God's grace, to trust in its author. This pamphlet lists evidence from science, geography, archaeology, and more, as well as evidence from within the Bible itself that affirms that it is indeed the Word of God. We hope you will take advantage of this booklet designed to increase your faith in God's Word. For free copies of How Do I Know the Bible is True, call 1-800-543-1495. 1-800-543-1495. Welcome to Issues and Answers with your host, Family Radio President and General Manager, Tom Evans. This program is designed to address issues facing Family Radio, as well as to answer questions posed by our listeners. Please join us now as we look for answers to issues and questions from God's Word, the Bible. Hello and welcome again on this New Year's Day, 2016. Well, we've arrived in a new year. God has been faithful. He's kept us, kept us safe, as he always has. And he's brought us through another year. 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 Look ahead as we look forward now into a new year. May we strive to be faithful. God has said that is required unto stewards that a man be found faithful in this world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man, this is 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now, just let me pause here. Each child of God, each one in whom the Spirit of God dwells, truly a Christian, they are ministers. We are ministers of Christ. And we are stewards of the mysteries. The mysteries have been revealed to us. We have been given a new mind. We have the presence of the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher, teaching us. We've become spiritual so we can begin to understand the spiritual nature of the Bible, the gospel. And so let a man so account of us, if we are indeed a child of God, as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God, moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That is what we should be striving to to be constantly, faithful. Now, of course, I look on, if I look honestly at myself, if I really look at myself, I'm, I have to grieve at my unprofitableness. When everything's said and done, I am an unprofitable servant, prone to weakness, prone to frailty. But yet my heart's desire is to be faithful and to be be faithful to God because he has been so faithful to me. I've seen it. He has been faithful. And his faithfulness has broken me and given me an increased desire to be faithful to him. I also see that when I'm able to be faithful, it is not of me, but rather it is of the Spirit who dwells within. Throughout the Bible, and I've been trying to talk about that this week, that the Bible speaks of the the fact that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within every child of God. Jesus promised that he would send the Comforter. The Holy Spirit is the Comforter. He is the Teacher. He is the Power. He is the one that transforms us it begins to show and empower us 
with the fruits of the Spirit. Now, this is a struggle, and it's a lifelong struggle, because we have a body, we live in a body that continues to lust and want to, to lust after the things of the flesh, and to be, you know, our, our nature, our physical fleshly nature wants to, wants its way. It wants its, wants to do what it wants to do. On the other hand, we have the sovereign King of Kings and Lord of Lords dwelling within us, the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, and so he brings all his power and might, and so we can say, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So greater is the Spirit than our bodies that are in this world. That's one way of looking at that verse. I know it's been interpreted other ways, but that's one way of looking at it. And that's a hopeful way. And so, when you and I begin to display the fruits of the Spirit, that gives us encouragement. And as we gain more experience, the longer we are indwelled by the Holy Spirit, the more the Spirit makes His presence known. And the, and the more experience we have, we grow in grace. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth. We learn precept upon precept. We learn the truth. We learn more and more about Scripture. We begin to tie more and more Scripture together. We are able to rightly divide the word of truth. But even in that, I'd like to talk about that passage. Rightly dividing the word of truth. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, God has written these words. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now let's take apart this sentence here, or this, this verse, and let's ask the question, what is God asking of, of us? He says, study to show thyself. This is what we are doing. We're studying to show thyself. We're trying to reveal what we are. We want to study to show ourselves approved unto God. So what we are studying is not necessarily studying the Word of God. That's And that comes, that's another point altogether. I'm not saying it's not important to study the Word of God. What I'm saying is what God is what God is really getting at here is study to show thyself approved. We should study ourselves. Just like he says in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Well, here it's similar language. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. How can we not be ashamed if we are a workman? How can a workman be not ashamed? Well, the only way we cannot, we will not be ashamed is if our righteousness is given to us. We have the righteousness of Christ's righteousness, the robe of Christ's righteousness, that Christ Jesus himself, our righteousness is his righteousness, not our righteousness or our studying, studying the word of God, or be studying to be a great workman, or trying to strive to be a workman. And in our striving, if we reach a certain pinnacle or a certain threshold, then we, then we won't be ashamed. That's not what God's saying here. Rather, he's turning it around. He's saying, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman. If you're approved unto God, then you are a workman. It's an either-or. If you are a workman, that means you're approved of God. And if you're approved of God, that means you're saved. That means you've been born again. That means God is working in you to will and to do His good pleasure. That means the fruits of the Spirit are present in you. And he's saying, study yourself to see if that's true. That's what he's really saying here. He's not saying, study, and then you'll be a work good workman, and then you'll be approved. No, he's saying, study 
to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The only way we can rightly divide the word of truth, because if you remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, God is saying, the word of truth is not discernible by natural man. The gospel is not understood, really understood, by us naturally. We cannot naturally understand the words of life. They will be foolishness to us. Yeah, we may understand certain verses and we may believe them. We may have a knowledge of a lot of scripture. But even so, our understanding the, the measure or the amount of Scripture that we understand is not a measure of whether we're a child of God or not. Because a lot of people can understand deep, dark things. Satan can understand dark sayings. But yet that's not a measure or a litmus test of whether or not we're a child of God. If we are a child of God, we will rightly divide the word of truth. Why? Because one, we have the presence, we are in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Jesus promised. Remember in John 16, Jesus promised that I will send you the Comforter and he will lead you into all truth. So now, let me just read that passage again in John 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Should give us great comfort. Then our guiding ourselves, we, don't know, we no longer have to guide ourselves and depend upon our own intellect in our own intellectual understanding of Scripture, our own ability to ferret out Scripture, but rather He will lead us into truth. And as we read the Word of God, as we rightly divide the Word of truth, we can we do so with His guidance, His teaching us. He's given us a new mind. We have the mind of Christ. We have the fruits of the Spirit, and we are we have a new spirit. Remember, God promised, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. A new spirit will I put within you, in Ezekiel 36. God says these words in verse 24, And I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and I will bring you into your own land our inheritance, which is the new heavens and new earth, the kingdom of God. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. See how dependent we are on him? We are absolutely dependent on him. If we are blind, and if we have a heart that is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, and we're in spiritual blindness, and Jesus even talked about how great that darkness is, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talks about the body and the eye and how dark the eye can be naturally. And when he were, said this in verse 22, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore in thine eye be single or sound, whole, thy whole body shall be full of light. And that's what happens when we become born again. That's why Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Well, that light comes from the Spirit of God who dwells in us. Then he says, but if thine eye be evil, 
thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? See, you're starting, you have to keep this in mind, this passage, along with a, Jeremiah 17, 9. You know, when you start thinking about yourself and thinking about this whole idea of how salvation comes and what it hinges upon. And so, on this New Year's Day, let us take a moment to think about what salvation is true salvation and whether or not whether we should examine ourselves whether we're in the faith and study to show ourselves approved we need to study ourselves whether we are approved or not and if we are approved we will rightly divide the word of truth on this day in the beginning of this new year this should be a constant thought, am I a child of God? And if I am, then I should be, and I am, and I've been commissioned to be his witness. And I will be his witness in a way that is consistent with the Bible. We will be loving, kind, and we should strive for this. And when we see ourselves not being loving and kind, which is which I see and, and, and am ashamed in myself. I pray, O oh Lord, have mercy. And I've seen his mercy. But let us be his witnesses. Let us be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God this year. And may we strive to be his faithful witnesses. And, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us this year. Give us grace, Father, to be thy witnesses in this world. And may we, those of us here at Family Radio, may we strive to be faithful. May we seek to be ever more diligent as stewards of the mysteries of God. To God be the glory, and may we give him glory in 2016. You've been listening to Issues and Answers with your host, Family Radio President and General Manager, Tom Evans. This program is designed to address issues facing Family Radio, as well as to answer many of the questions received from our listeners. We hope you'll join us each weekday at this same time when we once again look to God's Word, the Bible, as we discuss issues and answers. So, um, today is... Um... <laughs> Very privileged to be able to say today is uh, January 1st, 2015, and we are indeed running out <laughs> of 2016, all right? I mean, starting from today. So, you know, I always recommended in 2015... And I'm going to start today on 2016. Do not believe me. Do not believe anybody else. Do your own research. But as of today, we are running out of 2016. Good night. Aha. Aha, 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 aha. That's the way I like it. Uh-huh. Uh, happy.